We're going to start. We're going to raid Deception cards. I'm not going to make an XL for this one. We're just going to go through the cards. So, 2 mana, Ronel and Doll. Reduce the mana cost of each card in your hand that didn't start in your deck by 2. So, it's a 2-2 two -two Nether. Reduce the mana cost of each card in your hand that didn't start in your deck. I think I think Deception has a lot of ways of generate random stuff. I believe she is playable. Um, I'm not going to give it S tier yet, but she seems to be a little bit broken. I'm not really sure in which deck I would play her, to be honest, but that's my first impression. She seems really good. Recurring Nightmare. Pull the top card of your opponent's boy to your hand. If your opponent controls a sleeping creature, add the Recurring Nightmare to your hand. Oh, wow. This is a one mana. Pull the opponent's card from the graveyard to your hand, the top one. This has a lot of potential. Deception has a lot of tools to sleep. Like, it's not expensive for them to sleep. Uh, and this card just gives you insane value. Like, if you go against Control Healing Light, you can get so many resources. The same goes for Control Nature. You can get Winter's Bounty. You can get Compost Charm. You can actually outvalue a lot of decks with this card because you can even get, get it again a few times. And it's not expensive for Deception to run sleep cards. They have some really amazing sleep sleep cards on it so i'm gonna give this an a tier as well and one mana is so cheap man one mana draw a card that you don't like you know what you're drawing and you can play accordingly and keep this on your hand that's not maybe on aggro decks this could be a little bit weak but even on aggro decks you kill an imp you get the imp you play the imp you're happy Toothpay. two mana two three nether Effect, hidden for one turn, after this creature attacks, add a random card to your hand from your opponent's domain. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, but he is hidden, so he's guaranteed one card. I mean, for sure the power creep of all of these cards is way higher. Like, I can already see this card just being much better than any other card. I'm not, in, I'm not suggesting this is going to be played on every deck. I think, although getting one card for free, because she is two mana, so, so she can always gets the trade or the attack. Actually, she's pretty decent because you don't even you don't even need to attack phase you can just attack so you can play her she is kind of like an encumber looter but you get a random card the biggest difference is she doesn't die when she trades encumber looter always dies she has a nether tribe she's hidden for one as well she has a lot of potential again i'm gonna say she's probably beatier might be even stronger the only reason why she's not A tier is because random can be a lot of trash. There's a lot of trash in the game right now, but who knows? She has potential to be A tier, but she seems to be really, really good. Uh, mainly because Incumber Looter does the same, but you draw. With this one, you draw a card from your opponent's domain, not from your deck. But she's two more HP than Looter. Same mana, also hidden. So a lot a lot going on for this card. Uh, Gloom Boyer. After you pull a card from your opponent's boy to your hand, transform it into a Path of Deception. Path of Deception, delve a card in your opponent's deck and add, it, add a copy to your hand. Dead Touch, repeat. Delve a card in your opponent's deck and add a copy to your hand. So basically, you can use this. Create a copy of a card in your opponent's deck. And then, if you sacrifice a minion, you do it twice. Um, and... After you pull a card from your opponent's void, you... okay, so this guy will transform into this card if you remove a card from your opponent's void. Um, it gives a lot of info on, on decks. I also feel like it's a little bit meaningless if people still have, like, mechanics to look at an opponent's deck. I think in a game where, where people are not able to look at your opponent's, opponent's deck, this is way stronger because you get full information of what they're playing, like, really fast. Or like quite easily because you're delving let me remind you you're delving so you're gonna see at least three cards you see three cards and then you pick one so like if we were not playing on this oh we can see opponent's deck this would be insanely nuts i think for the time being this could be a little bit slow like if you're playing it against aggro i know it may like you don't really want to be wasting one mana to steal one of their cards and you want sacrifice a minion to just get another copy of another card because it's too much work. It's too much process. This is really slow against aggro legs. So I'm going to give Gloom Boyer a B. Uh, definitely, definitely playable, but it's just not what I'm looking for right now. Um, 
D Nocturnal. Roar. Gain control of a sleeping enemy creature until the end of the turn. Remove, sleep, and give it blitz. I mean, it seems like they want to bring back the sleep, um, sleep mechanics into the game. So it also probably means like if this becomes a meta card or this becomes a meta archetype, that decks like light become back, go back to the meta and radiant down becomes much stronger again. And like because light is just just they have so many anti sleep mechanics, it just makes sense. So this is a really interesting card. I think it again it has a lot of potential. Two mana is super cheap. Uh, as, as I've mentioned before from Recurring Nightmare, Deception has a lot of ways to sleep minions. And now you will be able to sleep a minion. Um, you're going to be able to remove a card from their void. Uh, because the minion sleep, you're going to get this again. And then you're going to be able to gain control of the minion and trade with the minion. And it seems like Deception will have a lot of play with your opening cards and, and do everything. And that seems really nice. Um... Steal two tails. Well, I mean, the odds of stealing two tails are quite low. You're still gonna delve from the deck, which means there's probably gonna be like what around 20 cards, 18 cards when you play this. So, like, there at least one on there. You're gonna pick three out of there randomly. It's not gonna be consistently steal a wing con, it's gonna be like get a random piece of something semi useful sometimes. Lucid Dreamer after the, after the creature is returned to hand during your turn, game plus one plus one. Um. This is actually quite similar to a Hearthstone card, but not really. It's quite more complex. This feels like a little bit too hard to make it work. At the same time, it's not bad. I mean, it's basically you can get a Toast to Peace and then play this dude and like go for an insane one mana 8-9. So like Toast to Peace Deception is feeling much stronger. Also, like if you wrong path and, and you short leaf and you do all those mechanics, this could go crazy. He is also a guild card, which means you can actually recycle this guy, bounce it back, let him get it. Wait, but this is not a roar, guys. This is not a roar. So it doesn't work with those to bees. You need to play him and then swing minions back, which makes him way, way, way weaker from what I was theory crafting initially. I think it is decent. I don't think he's broken. Like you have to pick either you're sending minions back to your hand or you're playing sleep i think this is a different archetype from my from from my ideas we're gonna have to see more cards that synergize well with him because so far we have surely wrong path and of course i love this place but i'd not intended to play surely bring two minions back and then just play lucid dreamer as a three four you know it it doesn't sound that interesting to me and like it's not a card that we're running just for that sense i'm gonna give it a bit here if it doesn't work with Toast to Peace, I'm going to give it a B tier. If it works with Toast to Peace, it's A, maybe even S tier. But I think it's somewhat playable, but it's nothing crazy. We already read Path of Deception. Um, this is honestly not bad, but again, I'm not super excited about just picking a random card from my opponent's deck. There's usually something better I want to do. Um, Ludia's Lullaby. Put an enemy creature to sleep. Add a copy of each sleeping enemy creature to your hand. Put an enemy creature to sleep. Add a copy of each sleeping enemy creature to your hand. The thing is, this is insane value, right? Deception is getting insane value right now. Ludia's Lullaby seems to be really good as well. The only issue is Deception is one of the gods that can keep gaining momentum and value and value, but they are not winning the game because they just don't have time to play stuff. Like, yes, you can play this. I guess people are going to end up coming with a Stump Shroud deck that just gains, but even Stump Shroud... Tom Shroud is more than a combo card than a value card. Because let's assume you steal Terios or you steal useful cards. You won't have time to play them anyways. You have to toast to peace, get lots of dreamers on there. Your hand's full. You get a lot of random useless trash that's not from your domain. Like it's feeling a little bit clunky on my eyes. But we'll keep reading. Uh, for mana, Puppeteer. Put an enemy creature to sleep. If it's already asleep, gain control of it. Okay, it seems we are definitely pushing the sleep deception. And in my eyes, sleep deception is actually looking quite strong. If you get an insane amount of random cards, Ronella and Doll can be really scary to play against. We, we actually got a cheaper Talia, and to be honest, I'm not mad about it because cheaper, I mean, Talia was useless. You're paying two mana less, which translates into in game. Three less turns to develop a steal a minion card, which is completely manageable. 
The issue with Talia was ceiling was a little bit tough because you needed to spend mana on top of playing Talia. So she was an all around turn seven. This is a little bit better. So definitely stronger. I'm going to say this card is A tier. Um, Lysel, Lucid, Nightmaster. Gain control of the enemy weakest enemy creature until the end of the turn. Reto, she gained the strongest one instead. Uh, I think she's B tier, A tier. The more I read her, the more I understand her, the less excited I am about Lysel. I think she's pretty decent. I'm going to say it's A, B. But I don't think she's going to be played on every deck. Aliyah's hard to pull up. Yeah, she's pretty hard to pull off. Puppeteer seems way more manageable. Sleepwalker. Uh, 5 mana, 3-5 guild card. Each creature of mana cost 2 or less goes to sleep. I mean, I think Gods and Chain. Um, I, I used to believe, or I used to say 4 mana is where a lot of the cards in you just go really bad. Uh, then we started getting some random really strong 4 mana cost cards like Wolfcott Vanguard, Aiko and stuff like that. But I used to feel like 4 mana was really clunky. Uh, but I think it stays true for most aggro decks. 1, 2, and 3 is the powerhouse of their cards. So Sleepwalker seems playable. I'm not insanely excited about the card. He is guild. He will work with a lot of the sleep mechanics. Like, you can play Sleepwalker 6 mana. Follow it up with a Recurring Nightmare. Who knows? I, I think he is, he is playable. I, I think Sleepwalker is probably between A and B tier. Because I'm not in love with the sleep mechanic. There's a lot of countermeasures for sleep mechanic. Restless Bellkeeper. Return a friendly creature to your hand. If you do, also return a sleeping enemy creature to your opponent's hand. So it's a bounce. It's actually a bounce. And you're forced to bounce. Um, if you bounce your own minion, you can send back a sleeping enemy creature. I think she's a little bit complicated to play. From all these sleep mechanics and all the things we have seen... She seems to be the least interesting one to me, but at the same time, I might be overlooking how strong it might be for you to bring back your own minions. Like, it might actually be that getting Granella back is, is really nuts. It might actually be that getting um, Tooth Fae is really nuts. It might actually be that Lucid Dreamer is insane or the Nocturnal. So I think this card is more of an approach of you have a bounce back a minion for three mana and it also has decent stats. So, like, maybe these with Blade Borrowers, it can be really strong. Life put in four mans. Like, we don't even have to only look at the cards we have right now. There's a few synergies that benefit from Restless Bellkeeper already. So, even on a Mayday deck, like, now you have a Mayday bounce back. And if you have some sleeps, you can also play it with some tempo. So, actually, a lot of options out for Restless Bellkeeper. I'm not going to rate it super high just yet. I'm going to give it a B. I'm not even going to give it an A tier. Although I think this card has a lot of potential. I might be wrong, though, but she seems to have a lot of synergies. We, we might haven't looked or find out yet. Um, Cherish Memory, 4 mana, 4-4 four, four nether. Obliterate a creature from your opponent's void. This creature transforms into a 4-4 four, four copy of it. Usually, you don't get a lot of value out of this intended mechanics. But, 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 this is meant to be used to, I'm guessing, seal cards from your opponent's void and also obliterate your opponent's void. I think this is a little bit too niche of a card. I'm going to say this is more of a tech card. Like, maybe you want a Restless Bellkeeper, send him back to your hand once you transform it into something useful. But yet again, too much work, too many synergies, too many things going on for this to be a play. I'm only interested on the obliterate section of this card, which depending on how void reliable the other gods are, it's going to be how good this one is, actually. I guess it has potential for the time being. I'm going to give it a B tier. Uh, one mana spell nightcap. Return a friendly creature with mana cost five or less to your hand. Put an enemy creature to sleep. Now, this is quite interesting. Not only are you sending a minion back, you're also putting one minion to sleep. So this is a short leave or during escapee on drugs, if you ask me, because this has a lot. This has a lot of unique uses, and it seems like Deception is going to have so many ways to play out. It seems like Deception is going to have so many, so many decision making, so many strategize, get random cards, get discounts, get combos. And I'm, and I'm liking it. I'm actually liking it. 4-4 M finisher. I guess that could be really nice. Get like a 4-4, get a blitzer and just trade. It could be quite interesting, not gonna lie. Um, I could see it. I could see it. I I, I kind of overlook imps uh blitz minions. 
I mean, if, if one day your opponent gets an avatar of magic on their graveyard and you get Cherish Memory and you just put it on up for yourself and you get her, you're kind of happy. So maybe, maybe you're into something, guys. Uh, but Nightcap seems pretty broken. Sleep a minion, bounce a minion. And for, for an archetype that kind of enjoys bouncing back cards because you keep getting body like the Nocturnal or like maybe even Cherish Memory or something crazy like that, like... God damn, I'm actually seeing a lot of, I'm gonna say Nightcap is 8 year. I'm gonna say Nightcap is 8 year, I think. It's just a sleep one, but also swing a minion back. Um, I'm guessing in order for this to work, you have to have a minion on board, which might be scary. It's between A and B tier, but it has a lot of potential. Knight Embrace. It's a 3 mana spell. Um... Gain control of a sleeping enemy creature. Give it at the start of your turn. Gain sleep. So it's basically a puppeteer. But you pay one less mana to develop the card or the effect. But like you get it sleeping. I'm gonna be honest. The only reason I would play this is to fuck. It's just to fuck up with freaking Coronet players. I would just find an early sleep. Steal their 9 mana cost for 3 mana and get it myself. They get a Polyhymnia, I don't care if he cannot attack. They get an Avatar of Magic, I don't care if he cannot attack. They get a, 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 a um, uh, you know, the structure, I can, I don't care. This is basically really good against Lost in the Depths. So I'm kind of feeling it. I could play this attack card and Puppeteer's deck card and be like, I can steal minions. Your opening plays of Wolf Cut Banker with Protected, all Knights embrace it as well. I'm 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 finding value on these cards specifically if front lines get played, which already are getting played. Like um as I've mentioned before, uh you know, coronet minions, wolf cut vanguards, um everything. And now this is give it at the yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, I, it could be useful. I'm gonna give it a B tier as well. I'm not gonna say it's crazy broken. But these cards might be really strong. I'm not giving them crazy levels of value because I haven't seen the other cards yet. Cradle of Secrets. Add five random cards from your opponent's domain to your hand. Dread Touch. Reduce their mana cost by two. Add five random cards from your opponent's domain to your hand. Oh my god. Nature was or used to be the king of getting random cards for really efficient prices. This seems like a pretty solid seal card, first of all. You still need to sacrifice a minion, but you're drawing 5 for 5 mana. You're basically giving away one turn. I don't know. I feel like this card has potential, but at the same time, I feel like it's too meme and too slow for it to be super strong. I'm gonna give it a B tier, maybe a C tier. It's probably more of a seal thing. I could see it being useful. But most of the times, look at how much value Deception is rolling already. Deception is on the heavens right now when it comes down to getting cards on their hand. And honestly, just sending their good minions back to their hand. So I don't think you will have the time or the hand space to play Cradle. I think this is going to be not unsealed. But everywhere else is going to be a main card. So I'm going to get a B slash C tier. Uh, Dream Eater. Roar. Add a copy of a non legendary card in your opponent's hand to your hand. Dreadtoach. Pull the chosen card instead. Wait, what? Okay, wait. Deception doesn't have a chosen card, first of all. So this is copy, but if I sacrifice a minion, I can pick the card that I'm getting from his hand. Okay, 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 you, okay, okay. that makes sense, that makes sense. So you never get to steal a Randian, but you get to steal spells, you, you get to steal setups, you get to steal a ram, you get to do a lot of things. Honestly, Dream Eater seems strong. It seems like really useful for a heavy control deck. And it's really good against control meta decks. Isn't this bringing back the Kutroth mechanic people were mad at? People might be mad about Kutroth, but cards like Kutroth have been around TCGs forever. And they have to exist somehow, somewhere. It's just what it is. It has negative impact to you. It kind of does. You have to sacrifice a minion. It's a little bit more expensive. You need a setup. I'm I'm going to say it's not that toxic. It's it's kind of like a good road. You now you get stats, you get four three stats, but it's a harder thing to get it done. You're not just good throwing with nothing on the board. Now you have to play something which might delay this a little bit later. Because now you can play around good road if you clear your opponent minions 
or you force him to cut throat way later into the game, which is also good. Will chicken be good again? Maybe. Chicken has been bought and sold in the market quite a lot recently. Uh, lost in the crowd. 8 mana spell. Set the strength and health of each creature in your opponent's board. Hand and deck to be equal to their hand size. Obliterate any that have zero health. I don't know how to feel about this card. I don't know how, how often my opponent is going to have like... Uh, I don't know how often my opponent is going to have like zero cards in hand. To their hand size. I mean, it's kind of like a debuff, but... Candy Chain... But I'll be honest with you, oftentimes when Candy Chain is popping off and my opponent has no cards in hand, I was usually winning no matter what. I'm gonna give this a B slash C tier. I'm not excited about this one. Control matchups don't care. Against aggro matchups, 8 mana is too slow and late. So this, this is not playable. Uh, friend or foe, pull a random highest mana cost card in your hand to your opponent's hand. Then pull another random highest mana cost card in your opponent's hand to your hand. Pull a random highest mana cost card in your hand to your opponent's hand. Oh, we switch cards. We switch cards? Friend or foe is pretty nasty. Pull a random highest mana cost card in your hand to your opponent's hand. And okay, this one, I'm going to give it 8 tier. This is actually really strong. So you switch a card with your opponent. You switch your expenses card with his expenses card. Um, which maybe makes Lost in the Crowd playable because this is useless anyway. So I might as well give them Lost in the Crowd and steal a Randion. This might be actually playable. Uh, Guild Nighthawk, return a creature to hand if it's enemy creature gain leech. Return a creature to hand if it's an enemy creature gain leech. 4 mana 4 2, send the minion back for 2 guild. Pretty good, solid stats, uh, kind of playable. I'm gonna give it A tier, maybe B tier. Uh, Cars, Stealer of Souls. After a creature leaves your opponent's void, summon a soulless base copy of it with bleeds. Okay, okay, H Pain, please let me know, bro. Let me clarify this for me. Leaving the void is the same as if I Gleam Weaver a minion from your void, is he leaving the void or is he just disappearing from the void, which means he cannot get back into the board? Yes? So Gleam Weaver will give me two more minions with Blitz. Cars is broken, S tier. My only worry, my, my only, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Deception is not really getting a wink on. Cars is insanely strong, but he's not exactly a wink on. Like, this is one of the highest value cards we've ever found, or we have ever received as Deception players. This is gonna be insanely nuts, it's gonna be insanely strong. You play it, it's a six mana, you get a minion from the void. If you wait a little bit more, you can drop it with a Gleam Weaver, and you get insane value out of it. I think Cars has, I think Cars is actually broken. But we don't really have a lot of endgame mechanics. It seems Deception's main mechanic is going to be disrupt your opening game plan with cards like Friend or Foe and try to finish them off that way. It's going to be interesting. Someone's buying all the Tiets. People's crazy, man. I don't know why people want Tiet. Uh, okay, let's go through Mage, whatever. 4 mana, Blind Sage. After you cast a spell, remove cannot attack. At the end of the turn, gain cannot attack. She is good. But, okay, she is kind of like a Golem Golem. Golem Golem is the same thing, but 5 mana, 8-8. Eight, eight, and now we have 4 mana, Golem Golem, 6-6. Six, six. But, yeah, it's basically the same, right? It's basically a 4 mana, Golem Golem. Which, I've tried a lot of times to play those archetypes, and... I am usually missing something. Like just playing big minions is usually not good and not good enough because you're kind of slow to the board. So I'm not sure. I'm gonna say she is kind of playable, but she's not. She's not the best right now. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a B tier, maybe C tier, depending on it. It's four mana six six. You're probably gonna be able to attack with with her. But like, 
Mage hasn't really been playing too many minions. I don't think they're going to start right now. She is Mystic though, so have that in mind. If Mystic gets a little bit stronger, I'm going to I'm going to make the higher the rating higher. 2 mana, 0 6 structure writing on the walls. Frontline cannot attack. Roar, given enemy creature cannot attack. Afterlife, remove cannot attack from that creature. So, okay. This is interesting. But in Gods and Chain, having low attack, like a zero, um, it's usually pretty bad. I think this is going to be playable, but I don't believe this is going to be super strong. But it's doing a lot of things, though. It's kind of like a Rampart, but no, actually, this might be good. This might actually be decent. It's a variation of Entrapment Apartus. It's basically a variation, but like entrapment is four mana, right? Entrapment is four mana. Like, if you see, don't think about this as a minion. Think about this card as a healing. Imagine how much you're healing for two mana. This is basically the same as magic getting their own compost charm. This is basically magic getting their own compass charm, if you ask me. I think you I think we can sense this card as a healing card. You're healing. You play this dude, you're healing that turn. Because damage that you do not receive is damage that you basically healed, I would say. So I think this seems to be Mage's best healing so far. With with a lot of with a lot of potential. Doesn't help against burn. I guess it doesn't help against burn, but it's like is it it all depends this card can be really good and playable if that dragon's still a thing if that dragons and cdm and aggro mage is still a thing then this might not be as strong you could have run portable fortress this is better against aggro than portable fortresses because you stop a minion and you heal so i think this could be a little bit more versatile than portable fortress i think this is better than portable fortress for sure um for sure for sure i'm gonna say it because the cannot attack is actually pretty nasty. Obviously, if you play this on turn two, you stop a wood woodcutter in from attacking, and that's the only minion your opponents have. And now they have to kill this guy with other minions that they play. You're healing and denying favor for a really long time. So I'm gonna say this could be really really nice. But it depends. You're right. Doesn't doesn't help against burn. But I guess if you play these save incantations and other things, this might be pretty clutch. This card is super interesting. I'm going to I'm going to give it a beat here, but I think this has a lot of potential. Fear with team. 2 mana for C5 Dread Touch, draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's mana cost. You can transform it after. Actually, yeah, this could go with Reflection Elementalist and all those shenanigans. Um It's interesting, man. It's interesting. Maybe Metamorphosis meta. Remove a minion from your opponent, play Metamorphosis, get a 3-drop. I'd say it's worth it. It's good against aggro. And also you save a few HP before you transform. Um, okay, this one. Draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's mana cost. So let's say on average. On average. You know, you know what's the first thing that went through my mind about Beer Within? I don't know why, but I'm getting a feeling this card might somehow work with Lost in the Depths. I am getting this feeling this card will somehow work with Lost in the Depths. There, there might be some Lost in the Depths interaction with this card. I'm kind of getting that vibe. And I hope I'm wrong. I'm really hoping I'm wrong on this one. Squid, 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 Sarta. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's going to be something similar, isn't it? I don't... I'm not... I'm, we're skipping this card. We're skipping this card. We're not going to talk about this card. I'm not going to... I'm not going to tell you anything about this card. Illyrian's Gaze. Deal 12 damage to a creature. If this destroys it, obliterate it. Um, well, now we can one-shot uh, a Randian. Lost in the depth, what a nightmare made of, yeah. 
Uh, C tier. Maybe it's useful. I don't see potential for right now. It's like 12 damage to a minion, man. I don't know. Not, not cool. Do something more unique. As if that ever matter. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Pad of magic, one mana. Delve a magic spell with your mana cost equal to your current unspent mana. Delve a magic spell with mana cost equal to your current unspent mana. So you play it at six mana and you delve a five mana cost spell. Now, I'm not gonna lie, delving is a pretty unique mechanic. And usually delving, you cannot play around delve because you get the whole pool of cards is your own pool, which means what makes these cards unique is you cannot really know. Well, you get the hint of the mana cost. I mean, it's a unique card. I kind of like it. I wish it did something else. Spend one mana, delve a mage card. If it was spend one mana, delve a card from your deck, just like just like the title card from Light. Yeah, like the title card from Light. It would be good. But you're, you're getting a random card. And you might be able to pick from a specific pool of cards. Which means like Shapeless is 5. Unbound, Flame, Unbound Flames is 5. Um, like, I guess there's a few 5 mana cost spells. Which might make Pot of Magic a little bit easier. And it's a mage spell, so you're not getting a lot of random options. Maybe. I don't really know the pool to know which spot is perfect. But I'm gonna say B tier, maybe C tier. I just don't love it. Yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? Uh, Lilo Max, nice to see you, brother. Welcome, welcome. Vivid Imagination. Two mana, Delva Magic spell twice. Delva Magic spell twice. I like this one more. I like this one more. This one seems so much better. This actually makes me... These cards remind me of, of Hearthstone more. I'm not gonna lie. This reminds me of Hearthstone more. I think the whole delving and getting random mage spells... You're saying bad, but I kind of like it, man. I kind of like getting two copies of a spell. It's basically a draw two, but you get to pick from random spells and you get the same card. Usually draw two, take for example Cram or Frenetic, is three mana. You're delving two spells for two mana. It's not the worst. It's a little bit too random. You might get trash. But if we ever get some, just use random spells. I can see these being pretty good. Too many dumb spells in the game now. Well, wait, but it's not... Well, I guess, yeah, it's a magic spell, though. Magic spell is not that bad, but I, I guess I'm going to give it a, a B tier. Nothing too impressive so far. I cannot read this card where we're at, where, where we are, we are rat. Two, four mana cost, after the creature survives damage, transform it into one, one rat. Wait, what the fuck? We're rat. <laughs> we we we're, we're rat. We are rat. We're. <laughs> Shut up! Stop it! Stop it! Okay, I don't care. I don't care. You you are saying it wrong, guys. It's it's we're, we're rat. Okay, I'm 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 on the good here. I know what I'm saying. It's basically a mass ratify. This card's trash. No, this is not trash. What do you mean trash? Bro, do you realize? Do you realize? You play Riddle the Rat. You play Tracking Ball, deal one damage to everybody. And you transform all of the board into rats. This guy has a lot of potential. Like this guy can this guy can just clear complete boards, full boards. And you know what mage never had? Mage never had a, a, a Apocalypse Now. Mage never had a Bifurcating Curse. Mage never had a way to deal with super tall boards. They never did. That's why Olympians 
and Olympian War, Olympian Light. That's why all of those archetypes were capable of stomping mage. Because although you can play on bound flames and stuff like that, you would never kill the minions. But this is this guy is kind of fixing that problem. That against Olympians, yes, absolutely, because they go tall. They go tall, they go wide, sometimes they get warded, but you just need to injure the minions. Like, good tracking ball solves the issue, and it, it's so easy to set up. Also, you obliterate the entire board, and they lose the tribe. Bro, you play these against the Nuvians, and you remove freaking... Like, you can now make setups to remove Priestess and other annoying cards early on. So, maybe World of the River Rats is, is actually... I'm gonna say it's... It's Mystic. It's Mystic as well. And there's a few interesting Mystic mechanics. So... We give it an A. Shall we give it an A? How do you feel? We give it an A? Is this an A? I don't know if this is an A. I don't know if this is an A. I don't want to be too copium about this one. I don't want to be too copium about this one. But it's like a 4 mana dude with ratify. I think A is pretty solid. It's not an S. It's not broken yet. Maybe. Okay, just think about it this way, Baros. People play no Shaper and he's 6 mana. People play no Shaper, he's 6 mana. He's slightly better when it comes down to transform because you still end up having rats you have to deal with. But this is an AoE is no Shaper, potentially. Um... Uh, only for control mage cards interesting though. Okay, we're gonna give it B plus. We're gonna give it B plus. No, no, no more, no more, dis no more discussing. B plus. It hurts your own creatures too. Yeah, but mage usually doesn't care. Like mage usually doesn't even have a board. Uh, situational, but magic don't have too many creatures. I mean, I wouldn't play where we're rat and and blind sage. Makes no sense. But we're gonna move on to lab specimen. Okay, or to killer. Nah, get out of here. Get out of here, bro. You're, you're, dude has protected. Hortuk has protected. Don't you ever say something like Hortuk Killer? Like, that doesn't exist. Come on. Lab Specimen, 3 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Blitz, at the end of each turn, take 1 damage. Lab Specimen is bad. I'm gonna say it. Lab, this, this card right here, this card right here, trash. This card is trash, okay? At the end of each turn, you trade a minion, you are you 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 had low HP. Like it already went down on HP. You skip your turn, minus one. Your opponent skip his turn, minus one. So he's gonna be a 5-3 when it comes down to your turn, even if you don't trade anything. Even if you don't trade anything, he's a 5-3. He's a 5-3, guys. Yes, but it's bleeds. Bro, I'd rather, I'd rather play Starshard Bolt. I'd rather play Starshard Bolt. We're not even getting warded minions on this meta. So why would I rather have a lap specimen than a, than a Starshard Bolt? He's gonna die after the trade. Like, the only value trade he can do is... is 2 damage or less, and that's it. It doesn't really fit any of the current decks. Yeah, like, Mage is not super happy about playing minions either way. Mage doesn't love... Fighting for the board with, with, with minions. I'll say it. Lab specimen. Not good. Not good. It's just not good. It's just not good. Uh, Artifact Specimen reminds me of Monster Inks for some reason. He looks pretty good though. The art. Okay. The art on the other hand. He seems like one of the cutest broccolis I've ever seen. I'm not going to deny that. I'm going to say it. But he's just not that amazing. He's just not that amazing. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. So we're gonna go to Eldritch Blast. Deal 2 damage to the creature if it is destroyed on cover Eldritch Mystery. We're gonna move on to the next one. Knowing Descendants, draw 3 cards. If you're holding a rare better Eldritch Mystery, refresh 3 mana. We're gonna move on to the next one. Ascended Astrologer. Frontline Protected. While this is in your hand, after you play a Mystery, reduce this card's mana cost by 2. We're gonna move on to the next one. Um, Cosmic Witness. Uncover Eldritch Mysteries, next one. Swamp Witch, if you're holding a re next one. Replicating Craft Ratification. Transform all non-legendary enemy creatures in your hand. Open as... 
All non-legendary enemy creatures in your opponent's board hand, deck, and void into 1-1 one, one rats. It's a risk to 9 now? I don't think so. I actually think I actually think this card is not that strong. Mainly because from what I've seen, cards are actually really strong. And when cards are really strong, um meta goes faster. So if the game is even faster, why would we reach nine mana? I don't reach mana in my games right now. Like if I tell you how many games I reach nine mana, you wouldn't believe me. Really small amount. Um, so I, I, I will say it's, it's not, it's a game winning card. So I'm going to say, okay, this one is, um, I'm going to give it a C tier. I'm going to give it a B. I'm going to give it a B. I just don't think it's going to be played. I just don't think it's going to be played. I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think it has potential. I think it might be a win condition, but I feel like the game is so much faster. It doesn't even. It won't. It won't be on there. I might be wrong though. Look at the three top uh, cards of your opponent's deck. Choose any to put on the bottom of their deck. Uncover a mystery. Deal three damage if a creature if you're holding an epic mystery. Ward after this creature attacks your turn. Uncover an eldritch mystery. Okay, this one is probably strong though. I can tell you this one is good. Because you basically draw a card. It's a 2-3, which we already have on the game. Uh, it's the Blade Borrower Girl. But this just needs to attack. I mean, not Blade Borrower. Something Blade something, girl. But this has Ward and it's Mystic. So Tribe is good. Ward checks in. Effect is good. You basically draw an Eldritch Mystery. So this is actually pretty good. I'm going to say this one is A or S tier. Otanda, the first time you play a Mystery on your turn, uncover Eldritch Mysteries. Roar, uncover Eldritch Mystery. Just for basically... Normal playing tempo value setups, S tier, dread replicator. Um, at the end of the turn, if the top card in your deck is an Atlantean, summon a copy of it, dread or choose any Atlantean in your deck, put it on top of your deck. Um, I, I already mentioned and discussed why I believe this card is also S tier. I think dread replicator has a lot of potential. And starting top scales, roar, uncover Eldritch Mystery, just a three mana, three two. Get a mystery. We don't really know what they are. Mage seems to be really solid. I think they're getting some interesting concepts. Um, wait, actually, let me let me see this clip real fast. Lab specimen, three mana, five five. Blitz. At the end of each turn, take one damage. Lab specimen is bad i'm gonna say that this this car right here this car right here trash this card is trash okay well that was easy